I went Tosh. Me and Beefy have paid to have our teeth fixed, and yours still look nicer than ours. <laughs> That's true. No. I know, yeah. It's great tea. Do I hold that, lad? No, I'll hold it. I'll hold it for you, uh, Molly McCann. Uh, I'm trying to start off with your career, and I'm, I'm no UFC expert, but I saw your last knockout. Um, I feel like you got the same sort of hype as Ronda Rousey and you're kind of going down that route is, is that do you feel that as well um I'm a little bit humble so I like to not ever focus on what the media is saying or what their narrative is because it can change like that you've only got to look at AJ or some boxers just fall out of favor quick with the fans or are loved quick by the fans but it's been a long road um I walked in the gym nine years ago and within five years to the day I won a world title in the MS Bank and then two weeks after that I was signed to the UFC and I only had seven fights, pro fights, I had three amateur fights because of my boxing pedigree, they just, I had to lean on the job, no one wanted to fight me so I've had to lean the biggest harshest lessons, I've had a few of them Usyk fights let me tell you, um, not so much the the, the aftermath after them but um, I've had them fight I've had to learn and it's been uncomfortable and it's been painful and you, the whole world's given you their opinion on what you should have done and um, and it's, it's it's hard to take sometimes but I feel like I've found this will be my 10th fight in the UFC in November mm -hmm. and um, I'm finally at a level where I think I'm it's, it's, quite, it's gone quite global now it doesn't matter if I'm in America, if I'm in Europe, if I'm in England, anywhere, people know. And um, and it's a very blessed place to be. It's, it's a hard place to be because you've got no privacy anymore and you, you, you're the product of, uh, you're the property of the people. But I um, suppose if you can pass your message on the best you can to as many people as you can, then you're doing the right thing, you know. So I try and keep my head down as best as I can and try, try and transcend the sport and being a female in sport and being from this city, we're not, not always given a lot of opportunities, you know, but it's great to see the people I've grown up with uh, are reaping the rewards uh, at the forefront and the pinnacle of the sport. And, um, yeah, it's great, isn't it? It definitely is, Molly. I think uh, the best uh, example I can give you is, like, I probably know on one hand, uh, I can name you five UFC fighters, mm -hmm. and I'm a casual uh UFC fan, I'm a hardcore boxing fan, and you're one of the names that comes up, you know, Conor McGregor, yourself, Khabib, uh, Paddy, um, Kumara Usman, I don't know anybody else, so that, that must mean something, yeah. so you've cracked the casual market, which is yeah. everyone's dream. I, I, I believe we, I'm unapologetically Molly McCann, um, it's just like an, anyone, any normal human who works hard on the weekends, watches the boxing, watches the football as a bevy, and then goes back to work on Monday. That's I just try and personify just being your normal person, do you know what I mean? And um, I feel like in in interviews and in, in boxing it's hard to have a bit of character to you because sometimes you you're just annihilated for being different mm. because it's not the norm and boxing's very purist and um it's just a certain way mm. which is great. I love it and I love everything about boxing. It's my first love. But MMA it's a little bit different. We're allowed to be who we are. Mm -hmm. it, don't get me wrong, if, say if I say F the Tories or if I'm singing about Everton, um, <laughs> I get an eye to flip from you for the Conservatives or the Copites or the United fans or whatever. But um, You're more than welcome to say F the Tories because <laughs> I'm on the same page. Yeah, I'm literally going to do a speech tonight with Labour so I'm yeah. more nervous for that. But yeah, um, we transcend and support the best we can and we're trying to allow young people from our city and young women give them um, give them a, a look that it can be done. If we're out there and we're doing it, then that means you can, because where the kids can come from now, the sports, and boxing and MMA, the sports are much more well-rounded. The, the the coaching is a lot, lot better um, than when than we, we started. We just had to train ourselves and have a good go and still run rounds with bin bags on whilst eating carbs, not knowing how to lose weight, you know what I mean? But the... The, the the world has moved forward, education's moving forward and, and hopefully I can see boxing and MMA is going in the right direction. I feel like boxing's a little bit more honest now. I feel like there was a time when it, it was like a lot of 70, 30 fights and a lot. I understand that the new boys and girls coming through, you get your journeymen and your lane and your craft, but it's good to see that the headline and fights and the chief supports are... Uh, they're more 60, 40, 50, 50. And I feel like in MMA, it's always a 50, 50 fight. So that's why we get a lot of respect. 
and there's no hiding, we can't shy away. And it's nice to see that the top of the sports now, especially on Sky Sports and Boxer, the women are just just as um, promoted as the males. And in other uh, promotions, I'm not just uh, just showing these up, but um, it's great to see what the Sky's done with the Olympic boxing team near enough. And uh, it's good to see what's coming next week for, with Savannah Marshall. Definitely. So one of the things I want to ask you, talking about you know, women in sport, uh, I'm not asking for your tax returns, but how does women's pay in UFC compare to women's pay in boxing? Because I'm sure you speak to Tasha, Terry Harper, you guys must come pay your paychecks. Um, I never ask about money, however, I obviously know. Um, I know my, in MMA, what you earn is posted straight after the fight. You get money to show and money to win, so potentially if you lose, you can't walk away with half of the money. Um, I'm lucky enough to be on minimum six-figure fights now. Um, so. And I know in women's boxing, there's not many that are getting six figures. No, so that's like... I didn't come to a bit of a crossroads, but I'm not going to lie. When I went to Madison Square Garden, I was coming off the back of that first elbow. And I was sat there, went to the Gleason's gym, and I was boxing, and I was training with Heather Hardy. And then I was watching Katie, and I was just... I was round the matrium lot and I really get on with them and I was like, oh, I really want to do this. And then me, I was thinking, oh, I'll just have a few more than MMA. And then after the last fight, I'm a ranked fighter now. I've got a brilliant eight fight deal. The, the company are looking after me, they see me with. And it's not coming down to money because I was doing MMA for not a lot of money until um, the last three fights. Um, but it was the 50 grand bonuses that help. But like I say, the tax returns, you, you get taxed in America and then you get taxed in England. And then, yeah, you're walking away sometimes with half your pace. Do you know what I mean? So it's not always... People don't realise that, do they? No, Cause... and people don't talk about it, I suppose. Do you know what I mean? But like some states in America, you get extra tax. And then um, you, you're doing it really for the love of the sport. And, um, and yeah, it's just... I've got, a, I've got a lot to do still left in MMA. I've got my legacy. I haven't come this far and overcome this much to just leave now. But um, I'd be absolutely lying to say, God permitting, brain permitting, teeth permitting. I might not have these ones. I might have new ones again by then in case these get knocked out. But um, I'll be in the four ropes in that, in that ring one day. Um, it's my dream to, to finish in the MS Bank. It'd be my absolute dream to bow out, you know, like um, like Kel Brook did in the biggest fight of his life. And do you think you could do it like a, something similar to what Connor did? Obviously, he built no, himself no, UFC, no, no. fought um, Floyd. So, so you could potentially fight like the biggest female star. Fight. I, I'm not going to lie, I feel like I could have one or two and then I'd be right in contention um, because I box all. I box the Lisa Whitesides, I box the Chloe Watsons, I box, uh, I've trained with Chantel Cameron, I've, I've trained with Sav, I've trained with Tasha, I've, I'm from their area of boxing. Um, and to be honest, what wins me, my MMA fights is my footwork and my hands, and albeit now I know how to throw an elbow. <laughs> um, I just, I know I've, when I was sparring in, um, in New York, I was sparring Heather Hardy and the Gleasons in May, and... Um, there was one time when I was like, I was going to throw a kick or a knee and I just had to shake off and come back. And um, Have you ever seen if someone's taken a hard and then boxing, they sometimes lift the knee up to block? That's kind of what you do in MMA. You like you lift to get ready to kick and I kind of done that. I was like, oh shit, remember where you are, remember where you are. But um, yeah, boxing's the love of my life. So um, it just broke my heart. My weight category was never added to the Olympic selection. Um, so... I just thought after boxing, after I won the ABAs, I went to uni and then I just fell into MMA by accident. What weight would you fight if you did come into boxing? Oh, boxing would be 55. Was that featherweight? Oh, God, I don't know. In MMA, it's 56.7, but I know in boxing, I think it's 55 and a half kilo. So I just, I think that's maybe Ellie Scottney's weight from. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if it's Ebony Bridges or like Shannon Courtney weight, but the idea of Molly McCann versus Ebony Bridges that uh, that just sounds like a it's a, much it's, 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 it's a big fight. Isn't it? it's a big um, fight that, yeah. I remember when she fought Shannon. Call Ebony out because I'll title the video calling Ebony Bridges. I want to call. You can put the full video in, but I remember it, the first time I ever spoke to Ebony, she had the the, the eye. What happened to me in one yeah. fight? I broke my orbital bone. 
and carried on and someone tagged me in here and a thing and we spoke, it was pleasant, it was nice and then I remember a scene at a, a Eubank, Eubank was fighting someone in Manchester and she came and sat next to me and IFL, the IFL man, I forget his name, came over and I had a few drinks that day. He's like, interview her and I had no fucking clue what to say. When I was interviewing her and I'll tell you this, Ebony, I think he was being a bit funny actually and um, it wasn't the you I thought that you was, if you know what I mean. I was just like, are you trying to have me off here or whatever? But she's a Leeds fan, I'm an Evertonian. Um, I don't know, I'd even go and spa if she wanted to have a spa. I think I said that, I said, if you ever want to have a spa, we'll have a spa. But um, yeah, that'd be a good fight, wouldn't it? She's, she's only three years older than me, so... Um, yeah. You could always step in and step back, couldn't you, really? No, I'm not allowed. So when you oh, sign with the not. UFC, you can't... Oh, or I would... If I don't give me hold to them... How was Connor allowed to do it, just out of curiosity? Because he was on one fight deals. Oh, so, um, I mean, he's different mustard, isn't he? He's, like, to, to anyone in combat sport. Like, I think he, he... Personally, I think he supersedes, like, a Golovkin and, and a Canelo. Like, he's... You'll get boxing fans watching... Um, watching Connor, or oh, you did. I'm not sure if he's got that anymore because of. I think anyone will watch him, won't they? Yeah, I mean, it was like Tyson at the end of his years just to say, I've seen him, you'd still watch him, but um, yeah, I wouldn't mind a little go there with Ebony. I wouldn't mind a little go with anyone, to be honest, not just there. I bet you wouldn't, Molly. And just talking on Connor, I read somewhere that you know you and Connor formed some sort of friendship because you went to his bar, and sometimes you read these stories, you don't know what really happened, so tell us what really happened. Yeah, um, Actually, when I was in Dublin in March, and um, he walked, we've known known each other. Well, I say known, known of each other, obviously through we both won world titles in Cage Warriors, and um, he's always loved me. I think, to be honest, I'm like a mouthy, I suppose, like him, like a bevy, and he um, was at a Bellator event, and everyone ran to him, and as everyone's ran to him, I just withdrew. Now I tell you, I was starstruck when I seen him, and I thought, don't just be like everyone else, just step away. Cause I know what it's like, and um, and he walked off, and then he came back, and then he called me over, and then he asked for a pitch, and he had a chat, and then after that last elbow, I messaged them on Instagram, and I was going, I need your advice, I think, boss, how to deal with this overnight notoriety and fame, and people just being beside themselves when they meet you. Cause I've, I'm 32, working class, and now just a bit of a someone apparently. And I was really struggled with it, you know, and um, he sent me this fucking amazing message, which uh, my girlfriend actually, I sent her a screenshot saying, can you can we get this printed? I need it in my room. Did you like to read it? Um, I haven't got it now. A screenshot that I sent it to me and it's in a print in my room, so when I, when I wake up, I'll look at it every day. And it just told me how to keep it tight. And he's just said, like, I've seen your journey, I know where you go, and I, I know everything, and this is what's going to happen. And... And then after that, I went to his bar. It was mine and Paddy's coach, Ellis's birthday. So it was like our moment to just chill out. And we've gone in this bar, and um, his bar, and he's FaceTime me, he's talking to me, and he was just proud that um, my family's Irish. I'm obviously English and a Scouser, and um, I wore the green to co commemorate them and on that last fight. And he was just saying thanks for wearing the Irish colours. and. Congratulations, and he was just a fucking real gentleman to be fair. Like, I understand the madness, I understand he's the, the notorious lives up to these mad moments. But Connor's a, a nice human, and you, you'd never know everything he kind of gets up to for the for the community and for his country. But he doesn't need just to know as long as he knows that's good enough. No, you're definitely right there uh, about Connor. I think he doesn't follow many people, but he, he followed my Instagram account a while about a year or two ago. So I'd take that as Bit of a, it's a massive job. compliment. Yeah, yeah, of course he doesn't waste his time on bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, he's interacting quite a few posts as well. Has he? He's a good. He's good. I love it when um, I just see him like something and then he writes something on. And, and I think when I announced the um, the Magret, uh, sorry, when I announced the MSG fight for myself, mm. he wrote something underneath it, and I put, "I'll be taking that Mach magic with me, lad." Um, and he messaged me no doubt. So um, it's a similar fight for me as what he won the world title. The, the fight he won in MSG, the style of fighter that he faced is a kind of similar fight that I have. So she's a wrestler, I'm the puncher, who imposes the will first, who will win the fight. It's, it's, it's very similar, do you know what I mean? But um, so I'm very excited for the future. Um, make sure I keep my head down, best I can. 
and that's that. Molly, I really appreciate your time. Molly wanted to talk about you, to be fair, because like I said, I don't think I've ever interviewed a UFC fighter before, so I do want to talk about the boxing just, just yourself, so thank you for that little input. I appreciate your time. Sherry, lads. Oh. Uh, up the top for you, and uh, good luck to Tash, good luck to Liam, and good luck Frankie Stringer. Bring her home, motherfuckers. Thank you for popping my cherry. No problem, lads. <laughs>